Hi everyone, so having covered demand and supply now in lots of detail, let's put the two together and understand what free markets are and how exactly they work. So what do we mean by a free market? Well, a market is just any place where buyers meet suppliers to exchange goods and services. Now that place could be a physical place, so a market stall or a physical shop, or it could be digital like Amazon or eBay, online marketplaces. But when we say free, we mean free from government intervention. Equilibrium in a market occurs where demand equals supply. Equilibrium is just the Greek word for balance. So there is balance here between demand and supply when they are equal. Equilibrium is also known as the market clearing position. So at this point, where demand equals supply, the market is clear of excess demand and of excess supply, whereas disequilibrium occurs where demand does not equal supply. So what you can see down below are two different diagrams that I've drawn. We have demand and supply curves, as we've learned, on each diagram. And where the two meet, that's where demand equals supply. That is equilibrium. At that point, we get prices and quantities. I call them P star and Q star. So we can call these the equilibrium market price, the equilibrium market quantity, but also we can call these the market clearing price and the market clearing quantity. But markets are very deep, much deeper than this basic understanding so far. Adam Smith said so, the godfather of market economics. And he said two things. First of all, equilibrium in a free market represents allocative efficiency. And that is because at equilibrium, the resources that firms are using to make goods and services are perfectly following consumer demand. Basically, supply is perfectly equal to consumer demand at equilibrium. So for that reason, equilibrium is allocative efficiency. So it's clear then, isn't it, that equilibrium in a free market is a position we want markets to be in. But Adam Smith went deeper than that. He said even if the market is not at equilibrium, i.e. there is disequilibrium, the free market has special functions, special forces, that will always return the market back to equilibrium. Another name for the free market is the price mechanism, where prices in a market have got these special functions. What are these functions? What are these market forces? Well, in your mind, just think arsy, arsy. Just like when you guys wake up in the morning, you're feeling a bit grumpy, you don't have much energy for life, right? You're arsy, not if you have economics in the morning or if you're watching Econ Plus Star videos. No RC there. But under normal circumstances, you feel RC when you wake up early in the morning. Just think the same thing of the free market, the price mechanism. Prices are RC. They have these RC functions. What do we mean? What do prices do? Well, their core function, A, is to allocate scarce resources efficiently. We know that happens at equilibrium. Prices signal the fact that there have been excess demands or excess supplies, but they also signal the need for more or less resources in the market. Prices incentivize producers to increase or decrease their output in order to profit maximize, to make more profit. Prices also ration scarce resources by encouraging or discouraging consumption. So that's what the forces are. Just think RC, great way to get all of these learned. But to understand them properly and how they work, we need to take examples of disequilibrium. Let's do that now, starting by looking at excess demand. So take this first diagram over here. A situation of excess demand would occur if prices are below equilibrium. So let's say that prices are not at P star, they're at P1, right? At P1, we can see very clearly that demand is all the way over there, call it QD, where supply is only at QS. The difference between those two quantities is excess demand. Another name for excess demand is a shortage. This is not allocative efficiency. This is a disequilibrium. This is a problem. In reality, this will be seen via long queues of people desperate to buy this good or service, huge waiting lists of people desperate to access this market, maybe competition between buyers. What happens naturally is that prices rise at this point. Firms realize they're not able to supply the demand that's out there. They see all these consumers bidding up their prices, desperate to buy this good or service. Prices naturally rise as a result. So excess demand means there is upward pressure on prices. Prices rise. Let's assume in this situation they rise perfectly 
from P1 to P star. In reality, it will be numerous price rises before we get to P star, but let's keep things simple. In one go from P1 to P star, then bam, all these functions kick in. First of all, higher prices signal the fact that there has been excess demand to both consumers and producers, but also higher prices signal the need for more resources in this market. Higher prices incentivize firms to increase their output in order to make more profit. Yes, there is a chance now by producing more output, selling more at a higher price, you can make more profit as a firm. We can show that via an expansion along the supply curve. Boom. There you go. So what's actually happening here? Maybe new firms are entering the market attracted by these higher prices. Maybe existing firms are investing in greater capacity to produce more output. Maybe existing firms are able to use spare capacity to increase output. But that's the incentive function right there, this expansion of supply. At the same time, higher prices ration. They ration scarce resources, in this case, by discouraging consumption. We can see that via a contraction along the demand curve. Where do we end up? Boom, we get Q star with those last two effects together, which is at equilibrium in the market, which we know is allocative efficiency. Bam, that's how excess demands are dealt with in free markets, seeing the forces of free markets, the functions of the price mechanism in action. Let's do the same thing for an excess supply. Well, for an excess supply, it's the opposite issue. Price is not at P star, price would be above P star. Call it P1. At that price, stretch across, we can see supply is now way over there, call it QS, whereas demand is down there QD. The difference between those two quantities reflects the excess supply. Another name for excess supply is a surplus in the market. So what's happening in reality here? Well, firms are seeing warehouses full of stock. Um, if you are a physical shop, you're seeing your shelves are full of stock. Right? You're not selling what you're producing. If you're a restaurant, your tables are empty. Your kitchen is full of ingredients. This is not allocatively efficient. This is not equilibrium. This is disequilibrium. It's a problem. What happens naturally at this point is that prices fall. There is natural downward pressure on prices. It's a way to get rid of those stocks. So excess supply means there is downward pressure on prices. Prices fall naturally. At this point, the functions of the price mechanism kick in in the same order as before. Lower prices signal the fact that there has been an excess supply to both consumers and producers, but they also signal the fact that now there is less need for resources in this market. Lower prices incentivize firms to decrease their output. Instead, liquidate the stocks, sell your stocks. By that way, you are making more profit. We can show that via a contraction along the supply curve. So this could be firms leaving the market who can't compete at lower prices or existing firms just reducing capacity, reducing output that way. That's the incentive function. But also lower prices ration scarce resources. In this case, by encouraging consumption, we can see that via an extension or an expansion along the demand curve. Lo and behold, put those two effects together, we get Q star, which is at equilibrium. And then bam, we end up at allocative efficiency. We're at equilibrium. Perfect. So that, guys, is not just what free markets are, but how free markets work in always attaining equilibrium. You've understood these special forces, special functions of the price mechanism. What we now need to do is to apply the same idea to when curves are shifting, to fully understand how markets work. We're going to do that in the next video. So crucial, guys, you stay tuned for that. Can't wait to see you in that video. Thank you very much for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.